Are we on now? We just had a whole conversation about olives and blue cheese and nobody got to hear it. Probably for the best. Everyone's probably really grateful. <laughs> Everyone's like, thank God. At least we're five minutes <laughs> done already. Maybe we should do that every time. We should just not hit record and talk. Right. We should just get all of our, our gab out early. <laughs> Anyway, guys, the uh, bottom line is I don't like olives or blue cheese, and Christine does. And I'm on my third martini. There, that was the moral of the story. Because I bought a dollar martini glass at Goodwill. Uh, so what's up? What the fuck is up? Listen. Tell me. So much is up. Where, why are you drinking? Please tell me why you're drinking. I have a lot of reasons. Uh-huh. A, somebody delivered a Christmas tree to our house today, which I'm super excited about. Mm-hmm. That's all. Oh. Uh, B, and it's my first Christmas tree. I also watched Christine not tip him. L- listen, I said maybe <laughs> I should tip him. I was confused. Gia was freaking out. Oh, no. It was it was overwhelming for everyone. I'll probably email the woman at the company and be like, can you give him $10 and put it on my credit card? I don't know. I'm really stressed out about it. <laughs> uh, also, I just want to add, we have a subreddit now. Yay! Someone made us a subreddit. It's uh, ATWWD podcast. Perfect. Um, also, I want to add, this is something M brought to my attention. Uh, a woman named, okay, her Instagram handle is at MJBash71. She made a license plate that says, listen. It's- yeah, she got her, we have our first uh, <laughs> custom something from someone we always thought that it'd be cool if someone got a tattoo of our logo or like we were our goal is to have someone love us enough one day to give us a tattoo but so far this girl's winning because she got a custom license plate meant for us and it says listen i mean come on it's a what state was it texas all right so if you're in texas and you see this the license plate listen that's because of us give her a little love bump with your give her a little listen give her a little listen uh also another thing is that people are trying to come up with a name for our listeners. You know how, like, my right. favorite murder is Murderinos. I heard Drinksters. I liked that. Drinksters is good. The number one right now on the poll um, is Boozers and Shakers, which is funny because it's, like, <laughs> Boozers and, and milkshakers. Like, milkshakers. Okay, I'm into that. Boozers and Shakers. The only thing is it's kind of long, so people are trying to find, like, a more succinct way of saying it. But uh-huh. Boozers and Shakers is, like, the number one right now. Uh, and also Jessica, our wonderful moderator on Facebook, has created this cool map feature where you can at, like tag yourself. Or She's not, just amazing, isn't she? She does everything. Wow. She just moderates God bless you, Jessica. the hell out of everything. Also, let's go back to the name real quick. I like how it's booze like booze and booze like ghosts. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's a twofer right there. It's as my dad would say, a double entendre. Oh, uh, so Jessica made this awesome map where you can like pin where you are. So and she said so that. When Em and Christine want to create, um, like a tour schedule, they can see oh, she's, she's basically managing us already. She's, she's, she's not, she's not giving us the heads up to do a tour. She's just like greasing the wheels for us. She's just like, Hey, I'm gonna pave you a yellow brick She's road. like, when you choose to do it, we'll have already all prepared for you. <laughs> <laughs> so just saying that's there. If you want to add your location, uh also before i forget next facebook live is sunday december 10th at 3 p.m right em oh yes what are we gonna do at that facebook live um we're probably gonna fuck up the wi-fi we're probably gonna fuck up not having a selfie stick the audio might be off and Mm -hmm. we won't be able to see any comments oh my god great so if you like anything that we just said what the fuck is wrong with you like do you not want to do you want to miss that no i don't i do but i have to be there no matter what unfortunately we have to be a part of it um speaking of patreon i want to add that this week's uh episode is sponsored by mio diaz nice thanks mio thanks for the cool name Okay, so it's at Mio Doll. It looks like she's... I'm stalking her Twitter because I'm a psycho. Yay! It looks like she's from Hamburg, Germany. Hamburg. Hey! Okay, so that's why you picked her, because she's a fellow German. No. Maybe. I think you Nepotism? I think so. So thank you, Mio, for your um, donation. <laughs> for your charity, for your generosity, for your philanthropy. For your Free, philanthropy. For your humanitarianism. Yeah, 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 yeah. Humanitarianism, yeah. before people say I said that wrong. M 
just drinks a lot of I just of have a martinis. lot of strokes. Oh. oh. Well, that too. Um, so also there's a fun thing we're planning for our $25 donors that is coming soon. It is coming. And it'll, I think it will be available for others, but I think our $25 patrons are going to definitely get a, an early, yes, an early surprise. They're going to get it faux free and it's going to be a good time. Real exciting. It's going to be a good time that lasts a long time. If you know what I'm saying. (laughs) They don't yet. I mean, I do, but they don't. But like, it's funny to only you (laughs) as many of my jokes are. Uh, Right. Um, also speaking of $25 donors, and ten dollar donors, we have promised these video episodes, and I, I promise you they're coming. And I'm also coming up with some other fun ideas for maybe posting. Well, I'm not gonna. These do- videos are like our new shipping bullshit, where yeah. we are like, we promise it's coming, we promise it's coming, and then yeah. we figured it out, and now we have something else to horribly just try to. We just keep failing left and right. We keep trying and. Uh, but it, it's the next thing. It is the next thing. So videos are coming soon and we have your, the $25 donors are allowed to submit, um, topics for video episodes that everyone who pays $10 or more on Patreon can watch. So we're going to start those really soon. And we have a couple logged, um, like Eric skull and some other people have submitted their, uh, suggestions and we're going to make those videos real soon. So get ready. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Anyway, why are you drinking? You know why I'm drinking. I do, but like, tell me more. Can you tell people what's happened so far? Here's the thing. In, your, in the storyline that you're aware of. All right. Go as far back as you can. Listen. So what happened was, M has lived in this place for about a year. For over a year now. For over a year. And, um... Two of the roommates are moving out, mm-hmm. and so Emma's like, oh, I'm going to find some new roommates. So um, they found two roommates who are going to live with them in the house mm-hmm. and planned it all out, got in contact with the landlord, and the landlord was like, mm, no, <laughs> you did everything wrong, and also by tomorrow, I need you to give me $5,000 in a cashier's check, and... <laughs> That's definitely a condensed version of what happened. It's an incredibly condensed version. I swear to God, my landlord is a breathing, walking, living nightmare with legs and no heart. And she basically a thousand things went wrong. And then at the very end, all we needed to do, we actually signed the lease and she decided, okay, well, I need your security deposit and your rent, your first month's rent. And I was like, okay, I have a check right here. And she said, no, I need a cashier's check. I had to get $4,600 in a cashier's check. But here's the thing. I don't have a West Coast bank. So that that's my fault before people say, well, you should get one. I know. And that is exactly <laughs> what I'm fucking doing this weekend. So this never happens again. So I was like, what do I do? And they were like, well, you can at least get it in cash. So I went to the ATM. Fun fact, ATMs only have... Um, a thousand dollar limit and, and that's I, where christine comes in and that's why i called christine and i said i need all of your money in cash now <laughs> <laughs> and i was like oh okay christine handled it she well <laughs> no, barely no, she handled five hundred dollars worth because the fucking pnc didn't give me any more than five hundred dollars so basically christine was able to give me five hundred dollars in cash that night thank god i have good friends yes They all helped me out. They all gave me cash. And then I tried to Venmo them back. And Venmo has a policy where you can't actually spend as much money as I needed. I could PayPal them or some bullshit like that. But at this point, I've only got a couple of days left. write them a check. (laughs) Why are you laughing? Because the first time I tried to write a check in this story, she was like, no, cashier's check, $4,600 in cash tonight. Oh, right. So it's like a circular. It's like just a trigger now for me. So I never want to write a check again. Circle of life. Okay. Anyway, I'm in debt $2,000 to people, even though I have $2,000 and I have the best friends in the world for helping me down to the wire and trusting me to give them money immediately after they hand me all of the cash in their accounts. And then I drove to a 7-Eleven in the middle of the night. (laughs) And then after that, I was so stressed that like my way of going to the bar and getting a drink is going to the hookah bar. And I was desperate that night. So I just drove to a hookah bar on a work night. I met up with my friend nate right 
and he didn't know any of this was going on. And I met him at the hookah bar and I told him I was going to be late, but if he wanted, he could meet me at my car. And so he gets in my car while I'm trying to count all this money to make sure I have the right amount. And he hasn't seen me in like a month and a half. And he opens up my car door and I'm covered in hundred dollar bills <laughs> and I'm trying to count it. And I'm like, get in the car. There's no time. Help me count. I'll explain later. And this guy was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so anyway, it looked like I robbed a bank. I know I took every, you could have just fast forward through all that. I'm sorry, but this has just been a nightmare and everyone needs to share my pain. So guys, if you hear machine gun fire during this episode, M has brought us into a really sticky predicament. I don't know if it's just me or the winter or what, but it seems like there are a lot of folks around that are feeling a bit down lately. And that's why I'm excited to introduce our new sponsor this week, Talkspace. If you've ever thought about going to therapy, but found it too inconvenient, too expensive, or just too embarrassing to make it into an office, then give Talkspace a try. Talkspace is the online therapy company, and they make it easy to connect with a licensed therapist handpicked just for you. Using Talkspace, you can text, audio, and video message your therapist as much as you want. Your Talkspace therapist can listen to you vent about work or family, explore your relationships with the people around you, and help put you on the path to a happier life. To sign up or to learn more, go to Talkspace.com slash drink. And as a special offer for our listeners, you can use promo code drink to get $30 off your first month and show your support for this podcast. That's drink and Talkspace.com slash drink. Talkspace, therapy for how we live today. So I know you love to do research. Oh, yes. You are a... A scholar. A scholar in your own right. Yes. I'd say. I'd say also. Well, if you're looking to get a leg up at work and take your career to the next level, are you you looking for that? I am. You know I'm into my web design. My friend, you are in luck. Tell me all about what you're about to tell me all about. Okay. With over 3 million members and more than 17,000 classes. Yowza. 17,000. Skillshare is the Netflix for online learning. Oh, and you know I love my Netflix. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, Take classes in graphic design, DSLR photography, social media marketing, digital illustration, and even web design like you mentioned. Perfect. And Skillshare classes are taught by industry experts and experienced professionals, uh, which is perfect if you're looking to build your career or start the side hustle of your dream. Have you been side hustling at all? Have you been using any Skillshare? Yeah, absolutely. So I was looking at some of the Instagram business classes they have. Oh, wow. Uh, Skillshare also has cooking classes. Well, you better cook me something. I mean, I might. I might not. We'll see. <laughs> Lucky for you guys, Skillshare is giving our listeners a one-month free trial of unlimited access to over 17,000 oh classes. Gosh. You can't even take all the classes in that time. How are you going to pick? You're going to have to... You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to have to take a, drink a lot of Red Bull and stay up all night. Ooh, I bet they have a class on how to do that. <laughs> Go to www.skillshare.com slash drink to start your free month today. And access over 17,000 classes. You get unlimited access for a monthly trial. Again, that's www.skillshare.com slash drink to start your free month today. Tell me tell me a story because now I'm, I feel like, listen, I'm drinking my Nothing third. Nothing can be worse than what I just went through. No, and i drinking my third martini and I ate all the olives out of it. So I feel like I'm at, I'm at a low point. You're at a low point. I think you're at a fucking high point. I'm at a low point. All right. This is a restaurant in Florida. (laughs) Get ready. Wait, is it Senor Frogs? No, but I love a good Senor Frogs. (laughs) Um, All right. What if Senor Frogs was haunted? It probably is. Someone has gotten a little too drunk there and done some sort of spiritual damage, I think. Oh, my God. It's probably one of those people who do body shots. Yeah. And they probably died and now they hunt. It's when they pour that bottle from like a yard away yes. and it somehow always gets into your mouth. And yes, yes. The body shop people probably are like ghosts where they float around with like <laughs> shots on their belly buttons. Okay, go on. So um, it's called Ashley's of Rockledge. Oh, that sounds That's way fancier. The name of the restaurant. It is in the area north of Melbourne and south of Cocoa Beach. Mm. So we all know where that is. I still don't know where Does it is. Does anyone know where that is? Not me. When I think Melbourne, I think Australia. Me too. Melbourne. Okay. And when I think of Cocoa Beach, I think of Cocoa Puffs. Me too. Okay. Well, that's where that was originated. 
It was said to be um, the site of an old railroad depot, and that railroad depot burnt down to the ground. Oh, that's unfortunate. So it's laying on the remains of said railroad depot. Okay. It was then built back up after the prohibition, or after the repeal of prohibition, um, aka your heyday. Listen. What would you be like if we didn't, if there was like, if we still could not drink alcohol? What kind of person would you be? I would be a... Um, be doing a lot of illegal things, wouldn't you? A moonshine salesman. Yep. You know, my mom uh, used to ferment her own moonshine in our basement, <laughs> which, by the way, is not legal. So if you're a cop, you didn't hear this. But uh, she was the reason that a lot of people in my town had their first sip of moonshine. Nice. She was like, you want in? And they were like, fuck yeah, I do. Got them good Why and drunk. Why is that illegal? I don't know. My stepdad makes beer in the basement. That's, That's fine. It's, it's moonshine. I think because it's basically concentrated alcohol. And you're in the South, maybe it's still a thing. Maybe. Anyway. Linda. She should have kept that business going because apparently she made some good moonshine. She had like cherry moonshine and normal moonshine. And um, it will always baffle me that you don't drink alcohol. It baffles me that it baffles people because when I tell you the stories in private about the shit my parents went through <laughs> or the kind of parties they went to, it's like, oh, well, that's why you don't do it. Yeah, but see, same, but I went the opposite direction. I feel like we both had similar situations, but my coping mechanism was like, all right, I'll just erase it <laughs> with some gin. And I just surrounded myself with a bunch of friends in high school who wanted to get drunk enough that I didn't have to. Like, just mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. drunk enough that we were both kind of drunks. You know, if you put their over alcohol content with my underwhelming amount, it made two normal drunk people. See, my dad always said that because he didn't drink in college and all his friends were like crazy drunk like Germans. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I loved, I, I, I wouldn't change a thing. being sober around drunk people because they want to just, I just want to kill all of them. Yeah, but I'm pretty wild without alcohol. And so when other people yeah. are drunk, they like finally match up to me. So I'm yeah. like, oh, now I'm with the right kind That's of people. That's what my dad always said. He's, he always told us like when he was younger in his twenties, he would go to bars and stuff and hang out. And then the next day they'd be like, Bernie, you were doing this crazy thing. You were so drunk. And he was the sober and one. He was the only one not drinking, but like he yeah. was like, and he, they balanced out. Yeah. And when he told me the stories, I was always like, oh, cause like they were too drunk. I was like little. And I was like, oh, they just didn't know. Like and he goes, no, I was actually doing all those things. I was just <laughs> sober. And I was like, oh, God. We just finally matched energies. Exactly. So uh, before it was called Ashley's of Rockledge, it was uh, called Cooney's Tavern or, well, I'm just going to go through the name, uh, through the list. Cooney's Tavern, the Mad Duchess, the Loose Caboose, which couldn't mean a few things nowadays. Winner, winner. <laughs> <laughs> sparrow hawk which is weird because those are two types that of doesn't birds. make any sense that's like eagle falcon yeah that's like turtle tortoise <laughs> swan dove <laughs> and then it was also called gentleman jims listen before it was ashley's of rockledge i like the one what was the one the loose caboose yeah that's the one <laughs> that's the winner <laughs> Uh, so anyway, when it was called Jack's Tavern, it was a super classy area. Um, you had like, like black tie affair, like guys were wearing top hats and women were wearing their nicest dresses. Oh my. Glitz and glam, I tell you. Top hats. Top hats and coattails. Ooh, coattails. Love a good coattail. Love riding on them. You know, so you gotta ride to... on, you gotta ride on. I don't want to do the work. You got <laughs> You gotta go it's to lonely it. up top. Let me hang out on the coattails. <laughs> you gotta go to the loose caboose and ride on some coattails. <laughs> you know? My favorite ride at the loose caboose is a good old coattail. <laughs> I don't know how you don't drink. I It sounds like I'm drunk, right? Like who needs alcohol when I'm already I mean the podcast is going well. This martini is great. People probably start halfway through or when they just pick up on a current episode, they're like, Oh yeah, M's drinking. It's no I'm not. A lot of people do think you drink. A lot of people think that this is like some conspiracy theory. We're doing it as like a, a marketing ploy. Like one day it'll hit the tabloids. I'm actually always drunk. Em, do a lot of people think that? Do they? You just said a lot of people think that. Oh, I was just pretending that. I'm questioning your, your judgment on that. Mm, I like to think that people think about me all the time. 
Same. So anyway, that's why we have a podcast. <clears throat> one of the ghosts, let's just get into this. Um, one of the main ghosts is a woman who floats down the stairs. And I guess the layout of the building is that it looks like a house. So there's a second floor, but when you are standing on the first floor, you can look up the staircase and you can look up at the second floor balcony ish. Right, right, right. Like the ledge. And you can see dinner tables and people eating. And they can also look down from where they're eating and see into like what would usually be like the foyer of a house right 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 um so if you're sitting upstairs or standing downstairs you can see a woman floating down the stairs between the floors fabulous um they think it is they think it's the a woman named ethel allen and she died when she was 19 at jack's tavern oh that's so young it was um the last place that she was seen alive and a psychic who actually spoke to her apparently says that she was murdered there on her way down the stairs. So that's why she probably floats there. What do you mean she was murdered on the stairs? So they think that she was murdered and it started at the stairs. So either um, she, either the killer was a gangster because they think that she was somehow related to the mob or at least some like rough and tough guys in town. Right. Or they think it was a jealous boyfriend. They think, other people think it was a jealous boyfriend who was in the mob. So it could have been both of them. Oh, okay. But apparently there was an argument on the stairs she tried to run away from him on the stairs. She got chased out. And then when they found her, she was dead. Ugh. So that was kind of like the beginning of the process that led to her dying. So. Right. That's, and she was, I told you she was 19. Yeah. And that was in the 1930s. Okay. So the condition that her body was found in shows that it was um, a sign of a crime of passion. Ooh. So she knew the person. It wasn't just like a, a done deal. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't handle the true crime part, so I don't know how to say these things I'm lightly. I'm just going to nod. Okay. Um, the remains were found burned, and she was so cut up that you couldn't recognize her. What um, the fuck? The only way they recognized her was like a part of her face, I guess. Like, I guess she had a birthmark and some other stuff on her face. So they could guess, but she was pretty, pretty not looking great um oh my god and they found her remains on the shores of uh, a river nearby uh a lot of people wonder where the violent murder was but they've just it's just been determined as the stairs um also there's a ghost that's a man uh it's okay so different different places said it was an entity of a man others said it was a spirit of a boy some said it was of a young girl so a shapeshifter (laughs) (laughs) also of a dog and a monster (laughs) oh Um, yes uh so apparently uh because it was built because remember it was a train a railroad depot right so because it was located so close to the train tracks like i was looking at um like yelp reviews because it's still like a standing restaurant Uh uh-huh and they're like it's way close to the railroad like it's way Uh, uncomfortably close to the railroad so it really was like a depot where people would stand until the train showed up and then they would just walk five feet to the train like right right um but so because it's so close to the train tracks and it's also close to a major highway right um they think that this man slash boy slash girl slash dog slash monster (laughs) um they think that either it's multiple spirits or just one that shows up in different ways, but probably died on the property getting hit by either a car or a train. (gasps) Oh Um, no. There is a story of one man that got arrested at the restaurant in the forties and he got dragged down the stairs. Like they handcuffed his hands behind his back, his feet, like basically hog tied him and then dragged him down (gasps) the stairs face first. And these were cops. These were cops. So like, I don't know what they're, protocol was back then but it was great fuck so dragged him out and i guess his daughter saw this like his like four-year-old daughter saw this happening and she got scared and ran out into the street and got hit (gasps) what yeah wait got hit by a car yeah poor baby and um wait what the fuck I guess because she just was freaked out. That's so twisted. But so um, they know that if they ever see a little girl, they like to think that it's maybe that girl because they're that's the only death of a little girl on the property. Um, and they've also seen her running up and down the stairs. And then they've seen her 
Like they've seen an apparition of a little girl talking to someone that wasn't there, which is the weirdest part because you can see a ghost talking to a ghost, but you can only see one of the ghosts. That's weird. And then apparently if you like try to get her attention, if they think it's like another guest's daughter, right? they'll be like, oh, what are you, um, who are you talking to? Just trying to talk to like a stranger, like a strange child, which by the way, you shouldn't fucking do. Just so you know, you shouldn't be talking to little kids if you don't 2017. know 2017, hello. Um, but so people have been like, oh, who are you talking to? Just to watch out for them. And then when she turns to look at you, she doesn't have a face. Uh, what? So. Okay, listen. I have a thing about torsos and no faces. I have a thing about every other thing. Listen. But so, yeah, she'll just like turn around. And she turns around apparently way slow. Like, listen. too slow. I'm going to just say this real quick because I've had three martinis. My first nightmare on record, I was two and a half years old. My I was sleeping in a laundry basket because my parents put me next to their bed in a laundry basket. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Didn't call CPS or anything. It's also, like, they're Germans. So fine. It's like, uh, it's not great, but it's not awful. It's like not great, but it's like. Not, I didn't remember it for my whole life or anything. Not great. But my first nightmare, I was probably two and a half and it was this guy I was in my bed with my mom and the person who I thought was my mom turned toward me. I'm sorry. The person you thought was your mom. Oh, in the dream. Gotcha. In the dream. So I was in, in the dream, I was in bed with my mom, even though my little laundry basket fake crib was next to the bed and my mom, whatever, turned around toward to face me and put her arm around me. And it was a man with no face and it was <gasps> just skin over his whole face. Holy shit. And I was two and a half years old and it's, it's my earliest memory. <laughs> That's your earliest? No wonder you drink. <laughs> it was really That's scary. That's why we drink. I think so. <laughs> it was really scary. He had just a skin face. It was like uh, that skin over the whole face. And I thought it was my mom. Could you see like the dimensions of like a nose there yeah, and everything? It was like it just looked like a skin mask. Yeah, it was like skin over all the features. You were destined to have a true crime <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and it was my mom, like in my dream, like I put my arm on my mom. I was like two or three years old, and then she turned around and it was this man with like no face. Anyway, sorry, so that's just what makes me think of You know, they do say that ghosts come to children in their dreams good and you were kind of living next to a cemetery and by Sad. next to i mean on one not until i was 12 okay that was when i was living above the restaurant okay was that haunted too i mean probably i mean i can't imagine a two-year-old pulling that out of their ass yeah i don't know where that came from i, I didn't watch tv or anything hmm. hmm anyway let's go on i'm gonna have that fucking dream now it's actually sometimes I think I still and the think arm about it. around you is the creepiest part because you like you're you're touching it without touching it. I still think about it because it could you feel the heat of the body? It was like me yeah. and in my brain. It's still it was like a real memory where like I'm like, oh, my mom's here. And I like put my arm on her and she turns around and it's like this man with no face. Firm pass. It's creepy. I was two and a half. I was so little. My earliest memory. <sighs> I was two. Or I was about to become two. Yeah. And I was meeting my great grandma for the first time. And I was sitting on her lap. And I still remember, like, it's such a vivid memory. I don't know what kind of little Albert Einstein I was at the time. Because I don't remember knowing physics at two. Or just science or how bodies work at all. But um, I remember sitting on her and her being so brittle that I thought gravity was going to take its fucking toll. And I remember <laughs> thinking at two years old, I was probably like, what, two, five pounds. <laughs> but I remember thinking I'm too heavy and I'm going to break through her legs and fall onto the ground. <laughs> what the fuck? And I still remember how bony her legs were. I And I still remember thinking I would have easily broken through her. And so I started crying and I remember it was the first, my first memory. And I remember thinking in my, whatever my two-year-old babble was, I told myself, cry so your mom will get you so you won't break through her legs. What the fuck? And so I started crying and there's a picture of all of us and I'm crying and it's my, yeah. so I have a picture of my first memory. And you're like, I know what was happening in my brain. Mm hmm. Listen, the first time I ever had a crush on a girl, there's also a picture of that exact moment too. No way. Very pivotal times in my life. Like my first memory, the first time I liked a girl and knew that I liked a girl, they, there's pictures of both of those. 
exact moments when it hit me in my head. How so old you, were you then? You, you can see a f- just a little speck of my eye, my my widening, whitening eye. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was three hmm. or four. I was four. I was in preschool, whatever that age is. Her name was Sierra. She didn't like me back. So anyway, there's an entity of a couple more people. Let's get through this. <laughs> um, the There's an entity of an old man who apparently was an employee at the time mm-hmm. uh, before his death, not like while he's a ghost. Um, uh, oh, thanks. You don't. You never know. But he used to live upstairs, kind of like you living above a restaurant. Aww. Oh, this is your future. It is. And your past. Slash my past. So he's thought to be a longtime employee because apparently um, people will see him in uniform and they will see him with a um, like a dish towel over his arm or like a server's Aww. waiter's towel over his arm. Yeah. But they will also feel icy hands on their shoulders and back. Don't and touch they will, people. They will hear whispers saying it's closing time. Ugh. saying like get that out it's semi-sonic being like closing <laughs> time and uh some people have reported um hearing whispers about um whatever's on tv in the bar so as if like someone was working in there and made a comment about the tv like, look cops is on <laughs> this is my look, favorite it's... episode <laughs> Um, lights and TVs will turn on off by themselves because what ghost story doesn't have that. Duh. Um, apparently this place has been covered with paranormal investigations. A lot of people go and check it out. And one time an investigator actually saw this guy on camera, um, with a towel over his arm and he was standing by the bar and he was, I guess, leaning on the bar or something like that. And he was looking right at the camera. That's creepy. Like he knew and he saw it and he didn't try to stop it no it's extra creepy when they like know it's creepy when they know especially when they don't have a face um (laughs) i mean this guy did but either way i'm not liking it don't talk to me about no face uh you know maybe he could have done the pan's labyrinth thing and like put some ping pong balls on his hands the thing is that i didn't watch that movie because of that weird memory i had you know that the nickelodeon show all real monsters the real life version of that would just be the pan's labyrinth guy well except fat yeah i also didn't watch that movie and because blue lips at that age i and was like hair. oh that's my that dream monster i see and so i didn't watch that i show. mean really whoever drew the cartoons for all real monsters obviously got inspiration from Paz, pan's labyrinth because he's holding his eyeballs he's literally holding he's his literally holding his eyeballs all the time all right another investigator got a picture of the same guy but he was standing on the staircase this time also looking straight at the camera I don't like that, though. This is why we have to pepper in shit about Nicktoons and my worst memories, because otherwise people are just going to not listen. You gotta it lighten gets too the weird. mood, you know? Like, oh, there's no face. Oh, my first memory is falling through my grandma's legs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there um, were demons in my childhood. Let's lighten the mood. <laughs> um, also, there seems to be an unknown spirit that nobody can see, which is presumed to be the spirit that the little girl is talking to that nobody can see. You know, the spirit that we can see talking to the spirit that we can't see. What? Oh, oh, oh. You yeah, know how there's the a girl, little the girl, girl talking girl. to thin air? Yes. Apparently, the spirit that's thin air that nobody can see likes to move around the chairs and straighten the pictures on the wall. So they think that they're still, like, an employee thinking that they work there because they're doing all this little slight housekeeping. That's kind of nice. Again, why don't I have a ghost like that? Seriously. Do my laundry. So he, this unknown, unseen spirit may also be very territorial about his status and because apparently i guess he used to work near the second floor okay uh, or so they think because if this is an employee he must have worked on the second floor because as soon as you get there he's pretty territorial and he will push and choke you ah! until you fall down the stairs what what <laughs> like no big deal he just like chokes you until he'll you... just straight up just like bing, like get you jesus because he wants to be in charge of it's like floor. i'm gonna like maybe someone like had some really dirty laundry and he was pissed about it like here i am doing housekeeping work in the afterlife someone needs to pay he's like if someone's gonna vacuum this carpet it's gonna be me and it's gonna be done right and i will choke the hell out of you if or you, you know what try. he's probably choking them because he just vacuumed and now their muddy fucking That's feet are gonna trek right through probably more. he's like i don't think so get back downstairs he's like take your stupid kid with his cheese it's falling out of his mouth it's like oh another crying baby my favorite so the entity of ethel the 19 year old that got murdered on the, near the stairs oh no 
She apparently is also very playful and likes to show people how she died. Well, that's me. <laughs> Let me just do a dramatic reenactment of how I was murdered. If my death wasn't dramatic enough, wait until I do it again. I need everyone for the next 200 years <laughs> to watch. I, I wasn't getting enough recognition for my death before, <laughs> so we're going to try until it's done right. Apparently, um, she will uh, start with a loud, booming, piercing scream. Mm, sure. So you can't actually see the death, but you sure can feel and hear it. So um, there's a scream that can be heard only in the middle of the night coming from this building, but coming from every room. So no matter where you are, you think it came from the room you're in. Good. There have been people who were upstairs and downstairs at the same time and swore it was right behind them from both floors. Um, it's reported that police have even been called because they oh. thought that the scream was legitimate and from another guest. Then after you hear the scream, the choking happens again. Mm-mm. But this time, apparently, the grip is different. So they think it's a different spirit because you know how there was the guy who's vacuuming. Apparently, his choking method is different than the one that follows a scream <laughs> what the fuck so <laughs> apparently people will feel this one's just a slight choking sensation so she's friendlier oh that's nice um and then it will this choking will kind of drag them like i don't get it it's lighter and not as harsh but will also drag you by the neck like it's a lighter feeling but will also carry your entire human body um Towards the bathroom, towards the stairs, going up to the second floor where the beginning of her death took place. No, no, no. She will also scratch their necks if they try to resist. Mm, okay. Um, so anyway, she also, when she's feeling a little happier, she likes to tease the staff in the ladies' room. So, and actually tease them. So a few people have gone into the bathroom, into the stall looked like under the stall like you know how you see other other people's feet yeah there's someone else standing in the stall with shoes and stockings from the 1930s what um with boot like uh a boot like kind of shoe apparently with buttons and high heels so it looks like very old school and you'll hear like the woman in there humming or like getting herself ready like adjusting her dress and all that and then when the staff comes out uh They'll see the door open and no one's in there. Ah! Um, Apparently others have been so freaked out and then they're like frozen in fear because of what they just saw. And then they get pushed out the front door. Ew. Um, There have also been two employees that saw that and just ran out and never came back to work. (laughs) Oh, shit. There have been other staff members in there who were trying to clean the bathroom, but the door was forced shut as if someone was pulling the other side of it to keep it closed and like so the staff member couldn't leave right and then she flipped out like freaked out started crying and then the door just like slowly cracked open like oh i guess i took this joke too far (laughs) (laughs) oh um sometimes you can also see her face in the bathroom mirror and that is what she's about that's all about ethel 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 my my very scary girl listen chill the fuck out um apparently there are other spirits out there who like to choke uh, a lot of a lot of chokers. Why? A lot Why? Of chokers. Why? So there's a third choker and they think that this one is the her killer. <gasps> um, Do you think that's why she chokes people? Why? Because someone did it to her when yeah. she was younger. Maybe. Doesn't she choke people too? Or she is... does the slight choke, but a full drag. Oh, she just like carries. She just people. defies all laws of science. Because what with... do you mean a slight? OK, yeah. Like she like give me your arm. No. No. Like, instead of, like, grabbing you hard, like, she does it lightly and somehow she still pulls you. How? Exactly! Okay. Okay. So we're both on, on the same level of confusion now. Definitely. Um, there's also a sense of doom felt all over the place, especially in the storage area and some of the corridors. Good. Um, they People have seen a full apparition walk through the front door that was closed um things in the kitchen have broken in front of people including glasses which never actually left the table they just exploded on impact like just exploded in front of you good fabulous um some people get pushed either up or down the stairs and they say it feels like a child trying to tug on their shirt to get attention but so strongly that they end up falling it's like that's an that's a demanding child oh yeah furniture is rearranged in front of your eyes cooking items are thrown and smashed people 
um, report feeling choked in their sleep. The best kind. I'm sorry. No. Uh, someone, there's actually a quote from someone who used to work there who says, I worked there when I was 18 and things were always jumping off the shelves and breaking on their own, like plates and cups. One time a knife flew across (gasps) the kitchen, like somebody threw it, but nobody was there except me and the cook who were standing on the same side of the room. The worst times are after the place closes. I used to clean up and would be there by myself and I could hear all kinds of noises like voices or people walking. No. I finally quit because I didn't like being there by myself at night, especially when the knives started throwing themselves <gasps> when I was alone. What? People will also feel an unexplained tingling on their face and a floating orb has been seen in several photographs in the dining area. Some people have seen the little girl with no face out of the corner of their eyes playing and dancing in the room by themselves, but also laughing and clapping for something else that's not there. Okay. Is it the same girl that talks to the thing on the stairs? I think so. Oh, no. Because she also doesn't have a face. And if there's two children without faces, that's just the line. The thing without the face, I have to go to bed 10 feet away from here in about an hour, and I can't handle it. Um. So... Apparently, the show has also been on a pilot called Haunted America. Okay. And on the monitor, you can see an object floating in midair, and it's definitely solid enough that you, can, you can't you can see through it, but it's, like, not... Like, it wasn't there before. Like, you see it manifest on the show. Okay. Um, someone going by the building uh, one time called the police because they thought that they heard a couple in the restaurant fighting, but the restaurant was actually closed. Mm. So they heard, like, people screaming, and so they think that that's also Ethel and her murderer. Right. Um, There's a little girl who's, like, in kindergarten, like, very young age, and she was acting really annoyed, and she told her grandpa to tell that little girl to quit (laughs) messing with me, and uh, no one had told her about a ghost at all. And when they asked, like, oh, what about that girl? They said she has a weird face. (gasps) Huh? Listen. Anyway, the other thing is that another team of investigators went one time to the house after night and they watched a chair levitate across the room and then gently settle back down to the floor. And then they saw another chair levitate and it got smashed into the floor like it was angry that I had to do it a second time. Um, Floating objects in the uh, dining room and others have claimed to see toilet paper rolls unraveling from the spools in front of them windows opening by themselves and latches unlock as well as faucets turning on by themselves after hearing a little girl giggle. Um, there's also an apparition of a young girl dressed in quote, roaring twenties clothing and equipment will almost always fail after you've seen her walk by. Whoa. I feel like if I were a ghost, I would like eat all the cheesecake or something. Like I would do well, something. One of the ghosts I talked to when I was, um, doing investigations myself my favorite story is we were explaining chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream to her because she was i mean she died in the late late 1600s early 1700s whoa so she was never around for ice cream which in itself is, is a crime fucking tragic but so she knew about cookie dough and we were like oh have you ever had um and i guess they had like I guess it wasn't ice cream. They had some like custard or something. something like that. Yeah. We kind of described it down to custard. And we were like, well, we have, um, we have frozen custard where it's, it's, it's like snow and custard put together. So it's icy, but it's creamy and it's really nice. And we have this, uh, a chocolate chip cookie dough version where you put cookie dough in it. Um, we put cookie dough in the custard and you can eat it all at the same time. And then all of a sudden we heard a little girl, um giggle from a corner from the corner of the room and this is a pitch black fucking room by the way no thanks we hear her giggle then we hear little girl like in heeled shoes footsteps walk towards the table we were at no and then we hear the giggle louder no and then the table shifted and like it's like how there's a table between us right now right. the table between us shifted and we heard her footsteps run to the other side of the room where the door was and then we saw the door move as if she ran through it and then we heard steps go down the stairs to the kitchen. Uh, As if, like, she was about to go try and find some. Wait, that's sad. She didn't find any. <laughs> no, but to be fair, this house, during operation hours, like, when we're not doing lockdowns, um, it used, it's a kitchen. It's a restaurant that she lives in. So I, the beginning of that conversation was saying, oh, now that you live in a restaurant, do you... Uh, I see. Do you get to eat a lot of cool stuff? How about ice cream? And then... 
the machines didn't go on. It didn't like nothing went off because I don't think she knew what ice cream was. And so we had to explain it to her. And then she ran away as if she went to go look for some in the kitchen. I mean, she'll probably get all the spaghetti bolognese she could ever dream. <laughs> I think so. So anyway, that was Ashley's of Rockledge in Florida. Slash. Slash Christine's Hell. Slash. What? What's it called? Ashley's oh. of Rockledge. No, the name. Uh, the other name. Oh, slash Loose Caboose. Loose Caboose. That's the <laughs> one. Christine, I really want to get a Christmas card with you this year. You do? Well, I want Gio to be in the front. Uh, of course. But here's the thing. I don't want to just give you a card. I want to give you a Christmas canvas. I just don't want you to throw this away. I want this to be something that you hang on your wall and ogle. <laughs> you know? I'm just going to ogle it for the rest of my life. I'm hoping. Canvas People has a very easy use photo to canvas service that I would be using for such photography. So much photography. Masterpiece, I might say. It takes your favorite photo, which we will be taking together, <laughs> and turns it into a beautiful piece of artwork, which I will have hanging in your house. Oh, sure you will. With or without your permission. Uh, so instead of snapping a beautiful photo of me and Geo, mm -hmm. which is the most beautiful photo. But I don't want it to rot in my phone. You don't. You know where I want it. I want it right on that fireplace mantle. Right on that wall. So instead of letting it rot in your phone, you can get it on your the walls of your home, in your office. Give it as a gift to yourself, to your friend, to me. To G. To G. And a canvas from Canvas People is usually priced at $69.99. That's for an 11 by 14 canvas. But for a limited time, you can get one free 11 by 14 canvas. Absolutely free. For free. For free. Free, free 99. Free 99. Just pay shipping. Just pay shipping. And that is an amazing deal. You can get an 11 by 14 canvas from Canvas People. Think of if everyone we knew got a canvas with a different picture of Geo on it. Think of how many canvases there would be with Geo on it. Think of the mural. Don't let the dream die. Guys, do it for us. Do it for Canvas People. Do it for Geo. Do it for G. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready for my story? Yep. This is the story of Ursula and Sabina Erickson. Okay. Do you I, know it? I don't know who they oh, are. Oh, man. It's so good. It's one of my it's favorites. It's going to get me going. going to get you fucking going. All right. A friend of mine named Ariana, who we took AP Euro together and bonded over just like the horrors of high school. And uh, she used to write me letters... Uh, from Patrick Stump, my husband from Fall Out Boy. And oh, we know your husband. We know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just clarifying. So she and I reconnected um, after years because of the podcast, and she messaged me and said, like, why don't you do this topic? And it's something I've always been really interested in, but um, never really considered as a topic for the podcast. But right. today I was like, I got to do it. So here we go. Okay, let's go. Ursula and Sabina Erickson. Identical twin sisters from Sweden. Wait, are these the silent twins? No. Damn. Okay. But that's another one. I know. I know that's another one. They're I know her. Yeah. We have quite the list, guys. We got quite the list of things coming we up. We do. So not much is known about them, except that they grew up in Sweden, in Western Sweden, with their older brother, and they were both born in 1967. Uh, their entire background section on Wikipedia is literally one line it's one sentence it's just like in the early 2000s or they grew up in western sweden with their older brother and were born in 1967 that's the only background anyone has on these two that's all of it all of it nothing wonderful else. Nothing awesome else. i love ambiguity yeah great fabulous um so in the early 2000s uh sabina was living a pretty normal life she lived with her partner and their two children in ireland and her twin sister, Ursula, was living in America. Okay. Ursula's in America. Sabina is Ireland. Yes. Got it. So in 2008, for whatever reason, it's an unknown reason, Ursula flies to visit her sister in Ireland. And according to Sabina's partner, they were inseparable ever since she arrived in Ireland. So one day, they just up and left unannounced and decided to travel to England. So they end up in Liverpool the next day on May 17, 2008, and they go to the Liverpool police station to report that Sabina's partner and another man have kidnapped Sabina's children. Oh, no. 
Uh, so no one knows how they ended up in Liverpool or why. Uh, but the twins' older brother later said in a cryptic interview in a Swedish newspaper that his sisters were being chased by madmen. Mm. Good. So they filed this report, and then they immediately hop on a bus to London. Uh, during this bus ride, the driver became suspicious because uh, they were acting really bizarre. They were holding their bags tightly to themselves. And then he asked to uh, search their luggage because they were holding onto it over their chest and wouldn't right, put right, it right. in the luggage rack. And they refused to let him touch their luggage or them. So he pulled off and asked them to get off the bus. The manager of this bus company uh, saw them clutching their luggage and just acting like totally petrified and called the police because she was like, it, I mean, it's 2008. She was like, I don't know what's going on. It might be a bomb threat. Right, right, right. So some police show up and uh, inspect their luggage and they find nothing more suspicious than a laptop. And they say, you know, they're not harmful and let them go. So not soon after the police leave, the twins decide they're just going to continue their journey on foot. So they start walking down the central divide of the M6 motorway, highway, mm -hmm. for you American folk. Um, and this is all actually, you can see this on C CCTV footage uh, of them just walking down the center divide of this major highway. They're just walking right down the middle of mm -hmm, it? Mm -hmm. Bold. So they're walking down the central divide, um, and then they decide to attempt to run across the highway. Oh, good. Uh, and so, like Frogger. Like Frogger, but like... But like Irish-American Frogger. Irish-American Frogger, where also you might die. Right. So, you know. Frogger might die. High stakes Frogger. <laughs> <laughs> IRL Frogger. <laughs> Frogger IRL. Frogger IRL. Yay. That sounds like a fun app. Yeah. Which, it's just like, it's when you have Frogger on your phone and then it demands an update if you want to play. Or it's like you have Frogger on your phone. It's like, okay, now virtual reality, like run across the street <laughs> and you can see everything on your phone. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine a VR Frogger? Right. Ooh, VR that's Frogger. just the quickest yeah. way to go. So anyway, so they're uh, on CCTV. They decide to attempt to cross the highway. One of them gets hit by a car. Ooh. Yowza. So the police show up and the highway patrol shows up. Um, and of course, because this is the world we live in, uh, a film crew from a show called Motorway Cops. Oh, my God. Which is basically like the British version of Cops. Perfect. Is driving along with the police convenient so convenient so they're just like happen to be this fucking film crew <laughs> with the police and they show up with the highway patrol um and so like this they had gotten minor injuries so they show up and they're like trying to get this report taken care of um that's kind of like what real cops is though like cops irl it's like cute like anyone who's ever been on the show cops Probably for a second was like, oh, how convenient that there's a film crew. <laughs> like, like, there's never been one that was like, oh, this was expected. This yeah, is what I wanted. That's so true. But you think about it, and every time I watch it, by the way, I love that show. I love that show. But I will add that they all have to sign. Not like, yeah. They the have only to reason you can see their face is because they've agreed to be on TV. And like, rarely you'll see someone's face blurred out, and you're like, oh, why are they blurred out? And you're like. Oh, right. They're the smart person who was like, I don't want to be on this fucking TV exactly. show. Exactly. Same with like one of my favorites. If I'm ever in like a real depression spiral. Yeah. I just binge watch um, old episodes of To Catch a Predator. Oh, it's so. I cannot get it off. Have you? They picked it back up. No, I haven't seen that. You have it? No. It's like, it's something. It's else. Hanson. Hanson versus Predator is the oh, new. Ver shit. It's already out. It's already out. What's it on? Um, YouTube. But like. It's literally he, this man has not aged by, by at all. Botox. <laughs> Probably. Hashtag he Botox. looks exactly the same. That's why I was like, he kind of has a little gray hair. Is he trying to go for like the Bob Barker thing where he looks wise now? Dude, and I was like, no, yeah. it's been 15 years. I didn't know it all. Oh, oh, oh. But, but all of those guys, like if you can see their face, they signed waivers. Right. Saying that they. On to catch a predator. And like, they're all like, please, I don't want to be on TV. Please don't show my face on TV. But it's like, we, Okay. But you're, I can see your fucking face. So you definitely signed something after this was filmed. 
I talked to my coworker, Joanna, who's from England, and she was like, why would people go, like, we were talking about the show Catfish, Mm -hmm. and I was like, it's so fascinating. Like, when it first came out, it was just such a fascinating look at, like, culture and American society, and she's like, I just have a hard time believing that these people would actually go on TV, and I'm like, people go on TV to do way stupider yeah. shit just to be on tv like yeah. they, they don't get any paid. attention is good attention in america apparently yeah they don't get paid they don't get i mean usually their reputation is ruined but they're on tv like there's nothing mm-hmm. five minutes of fame there's no rede- redeeming qualities from being on it but yeah so basically this show called uh what's it called again like, oh motorhome cops <laughs> motor home isn't it <laughs> what rv cops what is it called trailer park cops motorway cops sorry 40 and slip because i plan on living in a fucking mobile home one day so <laughs> mobile home cops <laughs> we laugh but also that really is a dream of mine uh, so they're all there they're checking out what's going on when without warning get ready i'm ready without warning what the hell could happen now ursula you can see this on footage Climbs over the divider and runs into highway traffic. Oh, no. She is hit head-on by an (gasps) 18-wheeler truck. Semi-truck. In England, they call it an articulated lorry. Oh, already? I don't know what the fuck you call it. It's an 18-wheeler. It's a Uh, big rig or... Big rig going at 56 miles per hour, which is 90 90 kilometers per hour. Before police can even react to her getting hit by this fucking 18-wheeler, Sabina, her sister, jumps over the divider, follows her sister into traffic, and is instantly hit by an oncoming car going at full speed. Oh, shit. She bounces off the windshield, which completely cracks. (gasps) She flies into the next lane and falls unconscious. And both women survive this adventure into oncoming traffic. Oh my god. So Ursula tries to get up, but her legs have been completely crushed by this fucking truck. Kind of like what I did to my grandma's legs. Excuse me? When I fell through them. Oh. <laughs> I was like, you drove you, over? You were there, obviously. You hit your grandma with a truck? Okay, oh I get god. it. <laughs> She's rolling over in her grave right now. Listen, one time my stepdad drove over my mom's foot with a car, but we're oh, not fuck. supposed to talk about it. One time I was on a date with a, a quote date with a quote boy. And uh, I don't know why boy was quoted. He was definitely a boy, which is why I didn't want uh, this date. It's just like a lot of quotes. But my uh, mom almost hit him with her car <laughs> on the way to dropping me off. He, She literally was inches away from hitting him. But I mean, it didn't work out, but for different reasons. What if it was just because Linda almost hit him with a car? That was the beginning of the end. I will say that. That's when you she were really like, set shit in motion. I'm changing my entire outlook on life i was like mom because of that i will never date a boy again (laughs) and i meant it no my stepdad in germany drove over my mom's foot did he break it or was it one of those weird stroke of lux things uh he broke it and then we were never allowed to talk about it again because they had just started so you're just broadcasting it to the world oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) they were just started they had just started dating and my stepdad had just met my extended family we were in germany and he was like that's horrible if i were like it's worse because it's like meet the fuckers we're like yes or meet the parents yes we're like you you have no one to laugh with because you're the outsider and i was laughing and tim was like do not ever because oh. <laughs> my mom's like me she's like oh my god it happens it's fun like it's okay like i'll get it fixed you right. know whatever and then tim was like do not ever bring this up ever again but now i'm across the country so i feel like whatever come and get me anyway haha ha, come and get me um anyway so she flies across the lane blah 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 uh both women survived so ursula's legs had been crushed by the truck and sabina was unconscious for 15 minutes because she had been hit by a volkswagen fair oh so she gets hit by a volkswagen is unconscious the one that got hit by a fucking trailer is truck. conscious the one that got hit by a trailer truck and can't move but her legs are completely shattered all right Give and take. Listen. When paramedics uh, tried to treat both of the women, they resisted. They fought, screamed, they spit at them. They attacked the officers and the paramedics. They were not having any of it. Um, at one point, Sabina shouted, they're going to steal your organs. Oh. 
And Ursula turned to the police officer who was trying to restrain her and said, I recognize you. I know you're not real. <gasps> what? Then how can she recognize him? I'm telling you. Uh, Sabina stood up. She was the one who got hit by the, the speeding Volkswagen. Mm -hmm. uh, when a police officer tried to persuade her to stay on the ground so she could be treated for her injuries, uh, Sabina punched her in the face. Wow. And went running back into traffic on the other side of the highway. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it took several emergency workers, as well as civilians who had pulled over, to restrain her and carry her to a, to a waiting ambulance, where they then sedated her. Um, an officer later said it was as if she was almost waving them around like rag dolls on her arms. Like, she was <gasps> so strong. Even after getting hit by that fucking Volkswagen going, like, 70 miles per hour. Uh, she was so strong that she was able to... This might to... be an insensitive question to ask, but was she drunk? Because some people have that weird Hulk power when they get drunk. They just get hit with cars and just keep running. No. Um, or just, like, fling people around like they're ragdolls. I mean, the the most... The closest thing to that was people uh, suspected they might have been on PCP or something. Oh, that's a good one, too, because all that super strength. Which, like, also alcohol won't get you, like that far but pcp will make your brain like super crazy okay that's a better but i should have just asked if she was on anything at all but um the talk screens showed no alcohol and no drugs in their systems whatsoever yowza so no uh that theory was debunked okay um, so both women were rushed to the hospital. Ursula was put in intensive care and she stayed there for several weeks. Sabina was only in the hospital for a few hours before being given a clean bill of health and being transported to the police station. So again, talk screens showed no alcohol or drugs in their systems at the time of the incidents. Uh, at the police station, Sabina was suddenly a completely different person. She was calm, polite. Uh, the officers even called her flirtatious, just very easygoing. Um, and two days later, she pled guilty to trespassing on the highway and hitting a police officer. And she was sentenced to one day in custody. But since she had already spent um, a night in police custody, they basically determined she'd already served her time. So they said she was free to go. So Sabina starts wandering around the streets of Stoke-on-Trent. Hmm. Uh, she was carrying a clear plastic bag of her possessions that the police had given to her. And that evening, after she was released, at 7 p.m., two local men spotted Sabina while out walking their dog. The men were 54-year-old Glenn Hollinshead, who was a welder, paramedic, and former worker for the Royal Air Force. A lot of things that that Glenn is he, up to. He did. Glenn had quite a, a resume. Glenn had quite a resume. He was also a father of two kids. He's done a lot with his life. You know, Glenn. Glenn was an accomplished, a well, a well esteemed man. Yeah, an accomplished Glenn. You know, classic Glenn. Classic Glenn. Um, and then he was with his friend Peter Malloy. Oh, so Mike's <laughs> brother. That's a, Mike Malloy's brother. <laughs> That's, that's all the information. You know, can you imagine if that girl who's flinging paramedics like ragdolls and Michael Malloy decided to get Whoa. together? That baby would be the Antichrist. Just saying. Or that baby would just rule the fucking world. That guy would be in a frat that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that guy would win every flip cup tournament. I'm just saying he would do a keg stand at two years old. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, da, 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 da. okay, so Glenn and his friend Peter are walking a dog and they see Sabina <laughs> and they're like, something's up. She's wandering around by herself. And Sabina kind of stops. She's friendly. She pets her dog and they strike up a conversation. And she asks them for directions to any nearby bed and breakfast or hotels. And Glenn is like, you know what? Why don't you just come stay at my place? No. So they walk back to his home, and on the way, uh, Sabina tells the two men that she's trying to locate her sister, who had, again, been taken to the hospital. Right. So the three spent the evening drinking and talking, but apparently her behavior was super weird. Uh, she offered them cigarettes, but then immediately snatched them back, saying they might be poisoned. Uh, the second 
anyone even did that that alone i'd be like eh, okay turn it in for the night goodbye please I'd, don't sleep here i'd be like hey do you see that outside why don't you go look at it and then i'd shut the door and lock it for a guy like glenn who's been around the block he doesn't seem to have learned much glenn he seems like that guy who would still like try to hitchhike or something but it's like that guy or pick up a hitchhiker yeah i mean he literally just did i mean he kind of a walking hitchhiker a walking hitchhiker i mean it's one of those things where it's like your weakness you know like a, like a young woman who seems troubled and you want to help you Aww, know damsel in distress you know glenn sure glenn <sighs> classic glenn god damn it glenn okay so she was also carrying multiple cell phones and a laptop on her no um, and wouldn't explain why um, she kept looking out the window the entire night anxiously, just like peering out the window. Mm. Uh, eventually, Malloy went home and Sabina stayed in Glenn Hollinshead's home for the night. So the next day, Hollinshead offered to help Sabina find her sister, Ursula, because she was super concerned about where she would where she was. Uh, so he began calling hospitals to try and help locate her. And that evening at 7.40 p.m., Hans had came outside of his house to ask his neighbor, uh, Frank Booth, for tea bags because he wanted to make some tea. Okay. But his neighbor, Frank, was washing his car and he said, as soon as I'm finished washing the car, I'll come over and bring some tea bags with me. So Glenn Hollins was like, okay, great. Uh, I'll see you then. He walks back into his home and uh, Sabina was waiting inside with a kitchen knife. Uh, moments later, Holland's head's neighbor watched Glenn stagger outside his house and yell, she stabbed me before collapsing on the ground. <gasps> Sabina fled. The neighbor called an ambulance and it turns out Sabina had stabbed him five times with a kitchen knife and oh, no. Glenn Holland's had died on the spot of his injuries. Oh, no. So soon after, a passing driver spotted Sabina wandering the streets, smashing her own head in with a hammer. Oh my, her own head. Her own head. She had taken a hammer from Glenn's house and was smashing her own head in with a hammer. <gasps> oh my God. So this driver got out and tried to tackle her in an, in an attempt to take the hammer away. Uh, but while he was trying to pull the hammer away... She somehow grabbed a roof tile out of her back pocket and stabbed him in the head with it, <gasps> which what? Which temporarily stunned him. Temporarily. So she didn't kill him, but she like basically him. knocked him out with a fucking roof tile. Uh, so at this point, paramedics were there. They began to chase her. She ran to a bridge and fucking jumped off of it. Oh, wait, so she's taken a hammer either blunt end or sharp end to her head multiple times and somehow hasn't hit herself in the head that stops like motor functions she's, and she's still she's capable. also been hit by an 18 wheeler going at 60 miles per but hour. her brain is working enough that i would feel like if you damaged yourself that much at some point your brain tells you to just like at least at the very least the part that like helps you move your arms and shit is turned off stops or, yeah or like at least the part of your brain that is telling you to do this stops nope <laughs> it just wow just yeah. sure will she just uh she sees the cops she runs to a um bridge and she dumps 40 feet off the bridge onto a highway oh my she survives god damn it uh she had several broken bones and was taken to a hospital and while she was in the hospital she was arrested uh she was discharged on september 11th and charged with murder uh, she pleaded guilty to manslaughter with diminished responsibility the following year on September 2nd, 2009. She only ever responded to questions with, quote, no comment, even uh, extensive police questioning. So no matter what anyone asked her, she always said no comment. There was nothing. Oh, shit. Nothing. Um, the defense claimed that she was a secondary sufferer of folie a deux, which is uh, like the madness of two. Mm -hmm. Um and they said that she was influenced by the presence of her twin sister, who was a primary sufferer, and she was kind of adapting to her sister's illness. Uh, so the plea of manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility was accepted, 
and Sabina was sentenced to five years in prison on September 2nd, 2010. But she had already spent 439 days in custody, which meant she was eligible for release in 2011. So this is pretty much the last anyone knows of what happened to the twins. Um, except that Ursula supposedly ended up back in the U.S. and joined something called the Sacred Heart Church. Okay. Where she received the RCIA rites of scrutiny prayed over her as she opened herself to the illuminated and healed by Christ and delivered from emptiness, illusions, and death-prone effects of evil. Wow. That is a long, long thing you said. It's a lot of words, and apparently it means that the demons were expelled from her. Mm, doubtful. Sure. Uh, it's believed that Sabina, her sister, is back in Europe living in Norway. And probably not mentioning any of this garbage. Totally. Just like living her Norwegian life in silence. With Lisa, I'm sure. Isn't she from Norway? Who's that? Oh, Lisa, yeah. <laughs> Who's that? I thought you meant Blaze's aunt. Oh. Lisa G. Lisa sounds like she'd be involved in this story. Listen, Lisa G's from Norway. All right. Tell Stick. us tell us how that girl's doing, Lisa. Is it's your she, job now. Is she your neighbor? Do you... Where? What did you do? What have you done? What did she do? Let us know. One of the theories... Okay, so there's a lot of theories as to what happened with the sisters and what the fuck was going on. So, Foliado, the uh, shared madness of two, it's like a, a rare psychological illness where... If one person has a psychiatric breakdown, the person who another person who's really close to them, for example, like it's an common I, in twins, identical twin. Yeah. I mean, it's not like common in twins. No, it, okay, but, it's not common for twins to have it. It's common for people with that to be a twin. Right. Sure. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or like a sibling or something. So like one of the theories is that like Ursula had this fucking breakdown and then Sabina kind of like empathized a little too strongly right like <laughs> went on board and that's you know madness shared by two that's kind of like us when we're uh, trying to do shipping or something that's kind of us like <laughs> every fucking day <laughs> um but so everything so there's theories that range from that um to demonic possession to mk ultra which <gasps> i Ooh. think is really fascinating well if you don't think it's fascinating you just don't know about it you just don't know and I read a lot of articles about how they might have had some sort of association with that, which I find really interesting, which, again, conspiracy theory, you know, you're all going to probably be like, that's bullshit. But it's interesting to think about. So for those who don't know, MKUltra was the human research program conducted by the CIA. It was very real. It, it, it was very real. It was real. The it C legitimately happened. Yeah. The CIA, the government, um, you know, admitted to it and explained what it was. Uh, it started in the early 50s, uh, and it involved unwitting test subjects who were fed LSD, uh, who were subjected to hypnosis, isolation, sensory deprivation, and even torture. And the ultimate goal of the project was to find the most efficient way to control someone's behavior. Uh, and supposedly, uh, the research ended in the 60s slash early 70s, but people tend to argue about that and uh some people believe that ursula who had been living in the u.s might have been part of one of the mk ultra experiments uh and one article i read says something interesting that it has been suggested that sight of the police acted as a post-hypnotic trigger on the sisters causing them to self-destruct uh mm. which is something that uh like suicide triggers was something that people associate with the mk ultra experiments right 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 where uh part of this plan was creating these triggers that would cause their subjects to self-destruct so oh i see gotcha so to you know like if they were to see police in uniform they would self-destruct okay such as run into traffic and get hit by an 18 wheeler oh shit to uh avoid being questioned or you know that kind of thing so that was that's part of the one of the theories about that's how i feel about disembodied feet <laughs> what it's, do you, my, it's a trigger i just lose my mind you're just gonna run into an 18 wheeler <laughs> well kind of in real life though wouldn't you if you saw a disembodied foot when you just like run the other direction regardless of what's there 
I would. I mean, I wouldn't run into traffic on purpose, but like, you know. I mean, you don't know. You don't know what could happen. I guess I don't know until I experience it. (laughs) So no one knows exactly what happened that day, uh, except Ursula and Sabina themselves. Uh, At this point, you know, Sabina's in Europe living in Norway. Uh, Ursula's in the U.S., part of some church that's expelling her demons. And nobody knows their backstory. No one knows about their children or their family. Uh, People believe they might be part of MK Ultra. People believe it might be a a, a folia dose scenario. And nobody really knows what happened. So it's just kind of a creepy-ass story. Yeesh. I like the MK Ultra version. Me too. It's fascinating. You know who else was an um, Kaltra? Um, Eleven's mom. Uh, I see. Mm-hmm. Stranger things. I'm just saying, maybe, maybe if Ursula had kids, maybe their name is a number and maybe they were found in Indiana. And MK Ultra was an actual. Yeah, thing. MK Ultra legitimately happened. Like the C- it wasn't. It's not like a theory. It's like an actual CIA yeah. project. Um. So and they said it ended in the 70s. And again, like they were born in the 60s and a lot of people don't believe that these experiments actually ended in the 70s. So, you know, who's to know? I mean, realistically, there's absolutely somewhere in our government where they are doing some sort of testing about this kind of stuff. Oh, for sure. I mean, MKUltra never died. It just changed its name. For sure. For sure. So when they say, oh, MKUltra died, they're technically not lying because they just changed the name. It's now... MK Extreme. MK Supreme. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so that's that. That's the story of these these wacko twins who, who fucking... They were like superheroes, but also self-destructive superheroes uh, running into... Uh, that's what we would be, though. It's us. It, actually, it is us. Oh, my God. Running into traffic and... Really, I don't like how closely linked I am to this story. I'm sorry I brought it up. Uh, you know, my niece, who's 11. Uh-huh. Not 11 from Stranger Things. Let me correct myself. <laughs> Her name is Katie. Um, <laughs> close enough. Close enough. But she's 11 years old. She recently started listening to the podcast, which mortifies me. Precious. Um, she's one of our biggest fans. She texted me last night and said, for Christmas, all I want is your merch. Bless That's- her bless her fucking adorable she also sent me um a ghost story no it's very quick tell me she texted me and said i have a ghost story (gasps) and then she said when we moved there are there's a bunch of this old guy's stuff still in here from when he lived here and we found his diary and the first day we moved in my sister uh, was playing with the air and talking to someone that wasn't there and kendall her sister is like five six oh no so we just assumed that it was the guy that lives there we just assumed that it was the guy that lives there (laughs) okay of all things um because he actually died in the spot that she was playing in and he died because of heart problems or cancer i forget which one Uh, (laughs) good good note there i love kids (laughs) she's really fact checking um he seemed to be following us because when we left we took the diary with us and brought it to the new house and we talked to him, and he's really nice. So just laying it out now, he's awesome. He doesn't, uh, he's not a creepy ghost. <laughs> P.S. Missing you. <laughs> Listen. She's a good one. I love her. Anyway, I told her I would say it on the show. So. What a baby angel. But also, like, the fact that she's like, oh, yeah, we talked to him. And I'm like, oh, excuse you. Oh, hi. By also, the way. he's nice, not creepy. So, like, you know. He's not sitting next to me or anything and making sure I tell you that he's good, but like he's good. Like we have, but like also I'm gonna tell him afterwards that I told you he's good. Oh, for sure. And like he, we have his diary, and it says in there that he's good, so he must be. And we know where he died on the spot, so because my little sister plays with the air around that dead spot, it's like fine. Anyway, hi guys, bye. That was supposed to be a good note, but it's a bad note. No, I like it. It's an it's a it's a child's pure story. It's pure and angelic. She wants to grow up and be me, I think, and I don't blame her. Listen, she probably wants to be me, but you, you know, whatever. Okay. Let's take it down a notch. (laughs) If you like what you hear, one, God bless you. 
too. Um, <laughs> we have uh, places you can find us, but I'm sure you already know about them. But here we go anyway. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at ATWWD Podcast. You can find our website, and that's why we drink.com. You can find our shop, which currently has even more cooler options so many things so many things including fan art on coffee mugs and posters buy some christmas gifts y'all um and you can find that at and that's why we drink dot you can email us at and that's why we drink at gmail.com where you can send in your listener stories we do one every first of the month which happens to be uh two days yesterday two days yesterday so if you haven't heard it yet two days ago if you haven't heard it, listen in. You can find us at all that great stuff. Our Patreon, you can also find us, ATWWD Podcast. Please, Live. please help us. Raw. Uncut. Uncut. Sorry. Anyway, um, also, Gio's doing fine. I just thought I would throw him. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed him a lot. I really needed him this um, this week. Also, let's all give Christine a round of applause for giving me thousands of dollars in cash, or at least being willing to. Also, by the way, we didn't mention this, but Christine was also having a party, like had a couple friends over that night. <laughs> and I just showed up at her house and she hadn't gone to the ATM yet. And I just crashed her party that I wasn't invited to, by the way. Listen, pulled her out of her own home when she ordered pizza. They started eating the pizza and I dragged her away and took her to a 7-Eleven. I was like, take all of the money out now. It wasn't a party. It was a weird. It was a powwow. It was a powwow. And all I wanted to do was give you $500. So, like, you made my night. Anyway, the fact that you're going to give me much more than that, brava. I would have given you more. And Gio could sense that it, that I needed a hug. So let's all give Gio a round of applause, too. Gio's an angel. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Sorry that you actually made it this far. I'm sorry. God, we're sorry. Hopefully you drank along so you're good and loose now. Loose caboose. Listen, be a loose caboose like us. But don't have a loose caboose. No. Have you, some respect. You know, have a little like of a, like, like a, like be a. Be a dignified caboose. You know, be a dignified caboose. Be like a, um, a, uh, an elastic caboose. Ooh, do your thing. Do your thing. Um, and that's why we drink? And that's why we drink. I'm going to smash my martini glass and my wine glass together. Because we mix alcohol on this show. Cheers. You have to hold it from the tips. Okay, but by we you mean Christine. No, you, no, you have to hold, pinch both of them. Yeah. Better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ah, just stop trying. I'm going to break it. Just stop trying. Clink. It was only a dollar at Goodwill. It's fine. You should probably just cut it there. Okay, bye. <laughs>